Today I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough of one of our standard pneumatic props that we use for our Halloween haunt. So this is a single cylinder, single valve. It has uh, one mechanism with one motion, so this is a jump scare. Uh, what happens is when the cylinder is activated, the top armature of this with the head and arm assembly will extend. So this is going to go behind a panel or behind a fence or low wall and will pop out as a guest as they go by. So these can be used uh, for very simple things such as drop panels in haunted houses, uh, for even the reverse of things where things retract or extend as you go by but this is a straight mechanism so it's solely extension and retraction and just a very overall good design we've used this one for many years and it, it gets a reaction every time people are not expecting a lot of our static props to move so when we get something even if someone has kind of gotten a glimpse of it before uh, depending on our angles and how well things are hidden they're generally expecting it to be static only so depending on our timing this will definitely get a lot of the people to jump especially the ones who've never seen things like this before so our mechanism is fairly straightforward um, we've got a standard wooden base with a uh, 2x4 timber uh, extension here and then attached to either side of that we use these heavy duty ball bearing drawer slides so on the back we've got our uh, 16 inch one inch bore dual acting pneumatic cylinder and when that extends it's going to push the armature up along the drawer slides so the drawer slides are nice because they prevent the armature from being able to twist and allow it to smoothly extend and then always retract to the same spot uh, they also take any strain off of the the side of the rod for the cylinder so that you're not putting undue wear on the the seals of it now we use a dual acting because i like the ability to mix and match these across props uh, i like the ability to control extension and retraction and the force of extension and retraction so depending on how these are connected we have complete control over all of these functions and can use them uh, year after year even in different props we're not limited to solely the thing that we bought the the cylinder for initially so connected to this cylinder um, we have a standard 90 degree straight through fitting and then a speed control metered out fitting on the bottom so we use the metered out because when it extends we want those to extend uh, with a kind of a full speed a nice pop action to it and we can regulate that depending on our airflow our timing uh, so how long we pulse the valve for and then also what pressure we're running compared to how much weight with this armature we're pushing now when we retract and this is going to come down the metered out is going to regulate how much air volume is coming out of this and returning back to the vent and this is going to allow us to adjust the speed of how softly it retracts down so this is going to prevent a jarring motion it extends the life of the cylinder and of the prop so our our fast movement is only on the way up uh, now additionally with this when we extend it we have designed this mechanism so that the limit of the extension is actually the cylinder rather than the prop itself so that way we don't have any binding at full extension and the prop is not essentially trying to pry itself apart we always want the the bore of the cylinder to be the limiting factor not what it is uh, pressing against so if you get any kind of stop and the cylinder is still pressing that is going to push and over time will wear your assemblies and can bend depending on how much force you've got here so we are using with this dual acting cylinder a 12 volt uh, three-way five port valve so we have two ports that are the outs for the cylinder here and then we have one input and two vents uh, now on these vents 
we have a brass centered filter so this prevents any dirt from getting in the cylinder uh, or into the valve and also adds a little bit of a muffling action so uh, some pneumatic shops these are called mufflers but you're usually going to see them uh, called a brass centered filter and their primary design is solely to keep debris out and oil and things like that from the cylinder in the valve assembly and not just spray it out every time it activates. Uh, we, again, like using the, the five port three-way valves solely because these will work with any cylinder we essentially choose to use. They're a touch more expensive um, than most of your standard valves but instead of like a three-way valve, we have the ability to run a dual acting cylinder or to put a plug into one of these um, and a plug into one of the vents and solely have this as a, a single acting cylinder control or anything like that. So we come from there and we're going to a regulator. So we run a regulator on each of our props and this allows us to run our airlines, since we're running kind of long distances, um, we run our airlines at a higher pressure, but we also have a regulator back on our air compressor. So this is redundant, but also allows us to control more of the force of the cylinder with this. So if something should happen to the primary regulator, this one is only going to allow the prop to see whatever this pressure is set for, but at the same time, it, with both regulators working, we can reduce the pressure down even farther to get just the perfect amount of speed and the perfect amount of uh, force to lift the, the weight of whatever armature we have on here. On the front here, we can see that from the regulator, the first thing when the airline comes in is it's gonna go through these push connect fittings and it's gonna go into a filter dryer. So we run a filter dryer before all of our props, uh, just like our regulators. And this is because our air compressor is actually indoors to keep our noise down, uh, to be closer to power, and just in general for the, the health of the air compressor. They're large and heavy, we don't wanna move it. Um, and they can be a, a bit obnoxious, honestly. So we have nice warm air uh, coming from our compressor um, as it's heated up going into the tanks, and then it's expanding really quickly coming out of that, going through probably a couple hundred feet of air line uh, between our main trunk line and then all of our branch lines from our distribution. And after it gets here, by then it is significantly cooled down uh, compared to what it was when it exited the nice warm uh, climate controlled area. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna introduce a significant amount of moisture, uh, not just into our cylinders and our regulators, or not just into our regulators and our solenoids, but into our cylinders. And for the life of the cylinders, you do not want water in here. You only want oil. So we do not run an oiler on our, any of our cylinders. We oil them uh, kind of before storage and then also before we use them for the season, we're going to put kind of a drop um, of oil on each side and through the ports and then make sure that our rod is uh, nicely oiled on the, the top mechanism here. So as for the activation side, we have a manual test button uh, on this particular solenoid. So when this is depressed, it's gonna bypass the solenoid valve and allow us to test our speed and uh, adjust things nicely. But then we also have uh, our 12 volt solenoid on here that is connected right now to a standard uh, wall power supply. And the reason that we do it this way is we use a barrel plug connector and this can be connected to a uh, AA battery pack that puts out 12 volts um, with a barrel connector on it in case we need remote power. Uh, it can be connected to standard wall power um, or just any kind of 12 volt battery pack that has the barrel connector on it. So that allows us a lot of leeway with this 
but also ease of disassembly and since it's not hardwired, we can unplug this uh, should we need to swap out a power supply or swap this over to battery. Now we have a uh, 25 foot uh, cord here, and this is wired into our solenoid um, as a, a switch on this connector. So this is a small mil spec connector, and this will connect to whatever our trigger device is. So this is going to have your power in and then your solenoid out. So if two of these pins on here are connected together, this will allow the solenoid to activate. Now the reason that we have the power supply at the prop instead of at the end of our control cable here is so that we can actually swap what is controlling this, uh, what goes on each end. So one of our general uh, universal controllers right here that we've assembled. Uh, so these are fully waterproof. Uh, we've got them in these Pelican cases. And the power input on this is a power con connector. And this is going to be uh, kind of spray down resistant when it's connected, as well as the uh, weatherproof mil spec connectors here. So these connectors, when they're fully tightened down, will seat with an O-ring so that this entire assembly is completely weatherproof. So should this rain, we don't have to worry about our controls and our electrical assemblies uh, having major problems. So we can put these out and not have to worry about them. So additionally, instead of just uh, having one of these controllers, we can also connect a straight button to this. Since our power supply is at the prop, uh, with a small hand mount button, so a little cylinder has a, a single plunger button on the end of it, and it has another one of these connectors at the end. So that can be mounted uh, to this cable, giving a, an actor the ability to manually activate the prop uh, and take timing and everything completely out of this. So we can not worry about computer control if we want to. Uh, we can have these props function completely separate uh, with only actor intervention. So with our prop controllers, these are going to connect, as you can see from this antenna, uh, these are going to connect wirelessly back to our our central brain for the, the show control. And inside each of these universal controllers is going to be a, a general power supply. So this is a 12 volt uh, and 5 volt power supply. And the, the 12 volts is going to switch with our relay to control the solenoid. The 5 volts is what we use to drive our wireless module. So we have a 3-channel DMX addressable relay board in here, um, as well as a uh, DMX 512 uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless module that sends the DMX signal from the controller directly to the relay board. So what we can do is we put 120 volts in. So this is just going to connect with a regular power cord into here. And then from there, the power supply is going to convert our voltages. So we have the 12 volts for our solenoid, our 5 volts for the wireless. Um, and then our relay board, additionally, is a, a 12 volt relay board. So everything is self-contained. And when this receives the signal, we can control up to uh, three relay contacts out on uh, per controller. So we've only got two wired on this one uh, right now with one internal um, for future expansion and things like that. So once this lid is closed, we have our full wireless drop and go uh, controller. We connect to one of the relays on the box just like that power cord is going to connect in here and then uh, each of these is going to have an address of three channels so like dmx channels one two three and then the next box would have four five six seven eight nine and so on so each of these is going to take up three channels 
uh, regardless. We can't mix and match. So we can't have one channel one be in one box and then channel two on another board entirely. But given uh, we're actually running multiple universes uh, between all of our lighting and our show control, and so this has never really been a problem. This just makes it super simple for computer control of the uh, of the props. But then at the same time, should we need to, we can disconnect this, attach the standard plunger, and make the prop entirely manual uh, if we have an actor in the area that would be better suited to activating the, the prop. You know, let me know if you have any questions, and if you liked this video, uh, like, subscribe, and, you know, let me know what you want to see. Uh, we have a whole lot of props, a whole lot of automation. Uh, we're going to be doing a video on our haunt sound and our the sound around our property soon. Uh, so let me know what you guys liked, what you don't like, and, you know, stay tuned.